Optimism is high on the banks of the Ohio River here in Cincinnati. Bengal fans, they are welcoming their quarterback back. And the Vikings hoping to welcome their defense back as they come to Paul Brown Stadium to kick off 2021. The NFL on Fox, nice to see you. Three-time Super Bowl champion Daryl Johnston. I'm Chris Myers. Well, it's the return of the NFL with sold-out stadiums. It's the return of the Viking defense, they hope, as it once was, and the return of Joe Burrow, his first game since last November. Yeah, Bengals fans excited to have Joe Burrow back, and alongside him is old LSU teammate Jamar Chase, and I do think we'll see a much more Mike Zimmer-like defense today, but this is week one. There's a lot of unknowns. Most of those on the other side of this matchup. How did Kirk Cousins, Dalvin Cook, and that duo of Thielen and Jefferson enhance their performance from last year when they were fourth overall and the Bengals went all in on defense, $100 million spent. They'll know how they are going to be this season soon. All right, we'll see if money talks. A lot of offensive star power in this game. The Bengals are in a rush to start this. The hardship arose unity and hope as our country came together. In honor of those we lost, we present a look back at how the day after the attacks paved the way for healing and growth, narrated by actor and former New York City firefighter Steve Buscemi, followed by our national anthem. Time. It's a peculiar thing. 20 years can go by in the blink of an eye. War seemed like a million years ago. The times we're living in now, unprecedented, uncertain. Some would say as challenging as the country has ever faced. Unfortunately, this isn't the first time we've faced such a challenge. A plane crash into the World Trade Center. Oh my God, another plane has Please, just hit. There are papers flying out of the windows. Wow. 20 years ago, this country was tested in a way we never have been before. Many believed we would never recover. We know very well that not to be the case. America faced her worst fears and heartbreak in 2001 on 9-11. This is the story of 9-12. The day after, we picked each other up. We did it by having faith and belief in one another and in something bigger than ourselves. We did it together. We did it by remembering who we are, but more importantly, who we as Americans aspire to be. We did it because in that moment, we realized it would require a shared sense of common purpose and teamwork like never before. As the day after turned to the week after, we realized that one of the ways we would in fact win was to get back to our fields of play where what it meant to win was much simpler, but what it meant to all of us was far greater. The opportunity to cheer again, to laugh again, to breathe again. As the weeks turned to months, we kept that spirit of unity alive, showcased for the world to see on the biggest of American stages. We got up and we fought back together. It's 9-12 again. Today our country faces problems new and old and seems as divided as we've ever been. As a nation, at our lowest points, we as a people find a way to rise the highest. As we remember and honor the memory of 9-11, let's also never forget the lessons and spirit of 9-12. There is no problem we can't solve, no obstacle we can't overcome, no mountain we can't climb. Together.
Friday, September 20th on Fox. Saturday is baseball night in America on Fox, and the push for the postseason is on. Christian Yelich and a lethal pitching staff lead the Brewers. Struck him out. As they close in on the NL Central crowd against the Cubs. Or bitter rivals battle for the NL East as Bryce Harper leads the Phillies. Let's go! Against Francisco Lindor and the Mets. It's baseball night in America, Saturday at 7 Eastern on Fox and the Fox Sports app. A plane just hit the World Trade Center. USA! 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 The people who knock these buildings down will hear all of us soon. There were a lot of risks involved with that operation. I just killed the number one terrorist in the world. Commemorate the 20th anniversary of September 11th with three new shows that remember the resilience, bravery, and patriotism for our country. Only on Fox Nation. 50 years ago, Nebraska, Oklahoma went down as the game of the century. Ask your old man, he'll tell you the stories. That's why the entire great state of Nebraska is headed to Norman this year, hoping for another classic. But these aren't the same Sooners. Oklahoma's barreling into Saturday with a whole lot of horsepower and a high-spin frontrunner at the reins. Oh, what a play! And to kick it all off, the best pregame party of the weekend. It's time to start Saturday strong. the greatest kickoff weekend ever. More football on this NFL Sunday than ever before. A hundred and second season of the NFL and the weather here mid 80s sunny no chance of rain good chance for some humidity and you see mild wind there coming off a seven and nine season rebuilding his defense back to Mike Zimmer style and Zach Taylor in his third season coming off four wins last year for the Bengals Cincinnati won the toss and deferred kicking off the rookie Evan McPherson the only place kicker drafted in the NFL this season in the fifth round as Amir Smith Marset the rookie watches and it bounces in the end zone out to the 25 yard line come the Vikings on offense and Kirk Cousins second all time in completion percentage behind Drew Brees and nobody is more efficient currently playing in the NFL this year when it comes to completing passes. Yeah and, and trying to take that next step after a really productive season last year with the guys around him. We asked Kurt you know what are your expectations and, and kind of the consensus. I don't know. This is week one. There's a lot of unknowns that are out there. I think we can be good. Kind of the same messaging we got from Coach Zimmer as well. Dalvin Cook, there's a flag down, is in the backfield before they even snap the ball. Ball start, Austin, number 30, five yard penalty, still first down. Well, you can tell the fans are back in full force, sold out Paul Brown Stadium. And on the road, that's something Kirk Cousins said we didn't have a problem with last year. We might have to use the silent count this game. On first down, Cousins flips to Cook out of the backfield, waiting for a block. And knocked down just short of the 30-yard line. And Jen Hale, welcome. You have more on Delvin Cook. Indeed, Chris. Everybody I spoke with on the Vikings this week has been in awe of how Dalvin Cook has flipped a switch the past two weeks. The decisiveness of his cuts, the burst he's hitting the hole with, the leadership he's showing in year five, truly paying huge dividends. He is the juice of this Vikings offense. And Chris, his hips lie. Defenders cannot read him the way they can read other running backs. The Bengals D is going to have to have intense gap security. We could hardly hear you, Jen, as you closed out your report. Here comes another penalty. Ball start, Austin, number 83, five-yard penalty, still second down. The fans making noise. Zach Taylor did say this week, he said, we want to have our fans make some noise, make a difference, and they have already.
Second and 11. Cousins well protected. Short pass at the 30. Tyler Conklin, remember Irv Smith, tight end out for the year. Let's look at that lineup for Minnesota. Last year, 10 different starting offensive line combinations and juggling again here, Darrell. And that's going to be the biggest part of the Minnesota offense this season. How can that group stay together? Can they stay together? We talked with Brian O'Neill. He feels that everybody is really in their traditional spots. There's been some discussion about guys playing in different spots coming into the year, but he feels that's their best area. So if that offensive line plays well, these skill players could have a great season. Four wide receivers. Cousins floats one, and the catch held on to just beyond the 41-yard line by Adam Thielen. Six defensive backs were in for Cincinnati on that third and long. Now, one of the new additions for the Cincinnati Bengals, Mike Hilton right here in that slot, playing against Adam Thielen. This is a nice throw, nice trust by Kirk Cousins because that is very good coverage by Mike Hilton. The ball is up. Adam Thielen has got his eyes back towards it. Mike Hilton was not, unable to make the play on the ball. Pickup of a dozen from the 42. Overcoming penalties. It's Cook. Maybe a yard. Knocked down right away. And you mentioned the money spent on improving defenses. Trey Hendrickson and Larry Ogunjobi brought over and they play five defensive backs on a regular basis anyway, the Cincinnati defense. Yeah, it's kind of their base defense. And, and, and you see so much nickel, you know. You, you see three wide receivers, so you're going to defend that with nickel. But the, the big thing here for this defense, you know, they, they needed to get better in multiple areas. They need to pressure the passer better. They had the fewest sacks last season at 17. They gave up the most explosive plays. But the biggest thing is they've got to find a way to stop that run game. They're going to get a huge test today trying to defend Dalvin Cook. I mean, this is amazing. Vikings have to figure out. They had, they had to be prepared for the noise. Offense, number 30, five-yard penalty, still second down. And that's that's CJ's second one. I mean, he had, he had the opening one. That's his second false start here today. Uh, and, and you're going to be moving, right? They're not going to play him a lot in some of those traditional fullback spots. He's going to go out through formation. So he's got to be dialed in a little bit more. Better to be a half-step slow than a half-step fast. Brian O'Neill, the right tackle, said we were prepared for the noise. Hasn't shown up yet. Cousins, short pass, complete to Thielen, his second catch already. Back to the original line of scrimmage. And Logan Wilson on the play. A flag inside the 30. Adrian Hill getting more airtime than Terry Bradshaw on an NFL Sunday. Our referee in his third season at that spot. They're marching the other way. Holding Yeah, that's Ole Udo. He's one of your new guys in there. Number 74, you can see him right here in the center of the screen. Working against DJ Reader. The Bengals liked that matchup. Reader coming over from the Texans. Second and 24, already four penalties. This opening drive on the Vikings after that holding call. Well, the fans have responded to the voice of Zach Taylor. Really an emphasis by the organization as well. They've got a number of things planned here throughout the course of the season for the Bengals fans, but it was it's something that they've talked about for a long time. They want to make this a difficult place to come and play football. Change the environment. Cousins throw through the hands at the 40-yard line of Justin Jefferson. Third and 24. Need to get all the way to the 48 of Cincinnati for a first down. Coming out of the slot right here, and this is a ball that Justin Jefferson should catch. The little outright by Thielen opens up that window for him to make the throw. It's a little bit behind him. You see it from that angle. Maybe a tough adjustment, adjustment for Justin Jefferson. Looked like Awuzie was traveling with him in the first few plays, but not necessarily on that play. Looks like he had help. Now third down, quick pass across the middle. Well short of the first down. D.D. Westbrook calls that in. 
And the punting unit comes out for Minnesota. Well, it's kind of funny when we had an opportunity to visit with Joe Burrow on Friday, and we said, what's one of the things you're excited to see week one? He goes, I can't wait to see our defense. I am so excited to watch them play. It was so challenging for us as an offense working against them through training camp. So a great start in that first series by the Bengals' defense. Darius Phillips back to return. Jordan Berry, who was picked up, signed by the Vikings September 2nd after he was cut by the Steelers. Mike Zimmer wanted more hang time, stronger leg. In his seventh season, gets this away to the 21. Phillips dancing to the 30 and brought down where the Bengals and the return of Joe Burrow, last year's number one overall pick in the Heisman Trophy winner is on display. The breakfast burritos. Daryl Johnston, Chris Myers, Jen Hale on the field, and Joe Burrow back for the first time since that injury in November, that left knee after surgery wearing a brace. Said he told us there's still a question how I'm going to handle things in the pocket. I won't know until we actually do it. He did take a few snaps in the preseason to get that vibe out of the way. Throwing on first down and well protected. Dumps it off. Joe Mixon gets up across the 35-yard line. Offensive line led up front. Trey Hopkins also coming off surgery. Yeah, kind of a, a unique way to bond with your quarterback, right? He's <laughs> a couple months behind him in an ACL. Uh, rehab process, but but similar to the Minnesota Vikings, it, it's going to be all about the offensive line. There's some exciting skill players on the Cincinnati Bengals offense as well, and, and that was one of the things. And you went with some veteran guys in Quentin Spain and Xavier Suafilo there at the guard position, which was where the competition was during camp. Mixon on second and five. Run out of bounds short of the 40. Eric Kendricks made the play Vikings playing without Anthony Barr that lingering knee injury but they have Michael Pierce up front the return of Daniil Hunter Vikings that really didn't factor last year yeah this is much more a Mike Zimmer style defense very big up front uh, a lot of injuries some opt-outs last year and all of a sudden your your season kind of goes sideways on you you talk about that starting D line for Minnesota last year three of those guys are on practice squad one is a backup right now to start the 2021 season so they just did not have the depth to to account for those injuries and Mixon did pick up the first down from the 40 Jamar Chase from his receiver spot and his first NFL touch loses a yard or two as Nick Vigil veteran linebacker made the play a one-time Cincinnati Bengal yeah, and, and if you look at the defense for the Minnesota Vikings, I want you to look at right here at the tackle spots. That, that's where you're going to see a little bit of difference from them. They're playing a different style of technique there. It, it's more kind of 3-4 base, kind of an odd front. You know, you talk to Mike Zimmer, he feels it's hard for the three techniques with the wide game and the wide zone they're going to see today to be able to get there to make plays. He's going to give up a little bit maybe in pass rush, but he's got to slow down this run game of Cincinnati. After a loss of two, Burrow quick pass, incomplete, a little bit high. Was trying to get it out in a hurry for Tyler Boyd, who has had 70 catches or more in the last three seasons. Yeah, interesting that this is the Viking defense, and Zimmer's always been read a 4 3 guy, active linebackers, but adjusting here to what will appear to be a 3 4, and I'm sure you'll diagnose what's up front and how the Bengals respond to that. And just on first down, second down, some obvious run plays where you're going to get some of those college elements, you know, the jet sweeps, the RPOs. But when you get to third and 12, you're going to get the Mike Zimmer four-man front. You're going to have pressures. He's going to stress you thinking. Jamar Chase, top of your screen. Underneath, C.J. Uzama, the tight end, stays in bounds across the 40. And on that third down play, Kendrick's making another play, bringing yeah. up the punting unit. Really nice job by Eric Kendrick because he's way in here. That's him. He's, he's kind of walked up. He's giving you a look there in the A-gap, and look at him. He's got responsibility to the tight end, who's got him outflanked by about five or six yards. But he understands that, and he gets out of there quick enough to be able to be there in coverage. Kevin Huber, 13th year from the University of Cincinnati. Longtime Cincinnatian from McNicholas High School booms it away. D.D. Westbrook letting the ball sail over his head and into the end zone. It's a break for the Vikings. See if the Vikings can snap the ball and, as Kirk Cousins says, be the point guard and distribute it to all the talent I have around. Motor Trends Truck of the Year for the third year in a row. 
Well, there's still time to play the $1 million Fox Super 6 NFL contest. It's free, easy to play. Scan the QR code, download the app, correctly pick the outcome of six of today's games for your chance to win big. From the 20, Dalvin Cook has yet to get going. As has the Viking offense, Sam Hubbard, Ohio State Buckeye from Cincinnati originally on the play. Yeah, you, you talk about what they've done in that defensive line. Sam Hubbard gets a, a nice extension. You bring in Trey Hendrickson, Larry Ogunjobi from one of your division rivals. DJ Reader back after missing 11 games last year. This is going to be uh, this is going to be a formidable defensive line if they can stay healthy. Justin Jefferson up at the top of your screen. Dalvin Cook after he picked up three feeling in motion. It's back to Cook. Almost bounced outside, but a good low tackle to keep him from moving upfield. You make all these changes and you want to be able to check some boxes here as you're moving forward because for the Cincinnati Bengals to be able to stop the run is going to be critical not only this afternoon, but within their division. You talk about the Cleveland Browns and how they run the football. Baltimore and their new unique style of running. And, and don't be fooled, Pittsburgh ran at the least last season. They're going to be running it a bunch with Najee Harris as their first round draft pick. So, so far, a nice start today by this Bengals defensive front. You saw the defensive coordinator of the Bengals, Lou Anaromo, reaching for timeout on a third and six. Cousins four out of five so far. Penalties hurt the Vikings in that opening drive. This is a really nice week one opponent for the Cincinnati Bengals defense to go against because there's a lot of questions that they still need answers to. And I think all those critical areas, I think Minnesota presents a really good challenge for them. Whether it's in the passing game with Cousins and Thielen and Jefferson, but also that running game with Dalvin Cook. You know, that is going to be the big one that they've got. Get. The last two years, they've been the worst in the NFL at stopping the run. Vikings trot out four receivers. Bengals threaten blitz. Need to get to the 30 for a first down. Cousins throws behind Adam Thielen, and it's fourth down. Kind of loading up that front, and this is why you brought these players in. Here you go. There's Vaughn Bell down there. Your safety walked up into the line of scrimmage. You, you've outnumbered everybody, right? That ball's going to have to come out quick. And he's got a free run there. It's a nice job by Ole Udo because he's able to kind of occupy the inside guy and get a little bit of a piece of him. But again, we see Kirk Cousins just a little bit behind on that throw. We saw it to Jefferson in the first series, there to Thielen in that series. Jordan Berry back to punt. Second boot for him, Darius Phillips. From the Cincinnati 30. And up across the 40, knocked down around the 45-yard line. A healthy return. Cameron Bynum made the special teams play as Joe Burrow and the Bengals try again on offense. Sunny day and humid. Fan going. A little shelter there. Shade for Kirk Cousins and the Viking offense is yet to click. Bengals get their second chance with Burrow at the helm. Two out of three in their previous drive, but but short, careful passes to start for Burrow. Mixon in the backfield after a 46-yard punt, but a 15-yard return. Straight ahead is Mixon. And we'll pick up a couple. It was a 12-month stretch. Incredible highs and a deep low for Joe Burrow. December 4th, 2019, wins the Heisman Trophy for LSU. Record-setting season. Five touchdown passes in the national championship game, beating Clemson. Drafted number one overall by the Bengals. An Ohio guy, remember. Started the first 10 games, 13 touchdown passes, just five picks. And then November 22nd, his season ended with a torn ACL and MCL in that loss to Washington. He's worked hard to come back, and he's on the move here. And he's going to get thrown down and sacked back at the 35. Nick Vigil got there first. And this is just a straight run through. Don't know what happened with the protection for Cincinnati, but not too hard right there. Here comes Nick Vigil. I mean, he's showing you he's coming too. Now, was that that 3 4 adjustment you were talking about? Maybe the Bengals no. offense is adjusting to that. Not there. Not on that one there. That, that's going to be mainly on, on your early downs or rundowns at, you know, second down there in medium. I, I think 
you know, Coach Zimmer will stay away from that and, and, and stay more traditional, but that was just a simple linebacker blitz from the inside that was a blown protection by Cincinnati. Burrow dumps it off. Samaje Piran gets up to the 43, the backup for Joe Mixon. Also rookie Chris Evans, sixth rounder from Michigan, part of that offensive backfield. And, you know, that's one of those plays that you're never going to think about at the end of the game. But what Cincinnati was doing was playing really good complementary football. They've been inching down the field on changes of possession to get out near midfield to start this drive. And if they could have just continued to do that, all of a sudden you find yourself with a potential for a field goal opportunity. That sack takes them out of that ability to get the first down on the conversion. And now they have to punt back to Minnesota. It would appear to be a cautious approach from Zach Taylor so far. Maybe figuring, hey, our defense is doing its part. Westbrook, fair catch. At the 10 yard line, good punt from Kevin Huber. And the Vikings take over on offense in the Queen City. On NFL Network. Everything you got. We're here for a storied rivalry with the game's brightest star. What an impressive run with a stiff arm. Saquon is back, giving the Giants renewed hope. What a game he's had. But Chase Young has his squad ready to defend their division crown. I'm not losing. It's an NFC East showdown. That's big time there. Thursday Night Football, Thursday at 8, only on NFL Network. Help support Hurricane Ida recovery efforts in the Gulf and Northeast. Visit NFL.com slash auction to bid on authentic game-worn items. Support the Gulf Coast Renewal Fund and American Red Cross. Text IDA, IDA, to 90999 to donate $10 to American Red Cross Hurricane Ida relief. After the 47-yard punt, in trouble is Cousins. Dumps it off to Dalvin Cook, who works his way up the sideline. Eight-yard pickup. Vikings have been playing out of their own end most of this first quarter. Yeah, they have. They've got to get a first down here to kind of start to try to flip the field back in their favor. And here comes Mike Hilton off the edge. And that's why they brought Mike Hilton in on this defense. They had to replace a nickel back. You bring a guy in. If you're trying to generate turnovers, if you want to increase takeaways, you've got to bring in guys that are unique in their skill set. Are they good guys that play on the ball as a secondary guy? Are they a good blitzer? Mike Hilton is a very, very good blitzer off the slot. Cook for the first down, shoved backwards right away. So far, the Cincinnati defense digging in, and Darrell touched on this is just some of the change. Of course, Carl Lawson led him in sacks. They only had 17 as a team last year, yeah. but Hendrickson coming over from New Orleans had 13 and a half. Outstanding. You know, one of the best sack percentages per play in the, in, in the NFL. The best one. Larry Ogunjobi really good inside, and then you saw Chidobe Awuzie coming over as one of your corners on the outside. There's, there's a chance that he may spend a, a, a majority of the afternoon going against Justin Jefferson here today, and then there's Mike Hilton, who we talked about is that slot nickel blitzer. Thielen in motion, Cousins is sacked at the 10-yard line, B.J. Hill. Coming over from the Giants, he wasn't on the list. We'll add him next time. <laughs> right, you're so worried about Trey Hendrickson on the outside, you forget about B.J. Hill, who's right inside him right there. So there's 91, that's your big addition, so you've got all eyes on him. Nice job by B.J. Hill getting underneath the paths of Ezra Cleveland. Cousins, that's where he wants to improve the off-schedule plays, getting out of the pocket and moving. He's so uncomfortable there. He just really has not been able to adjust. Quick pass here to Jefferson, and that's going nowhere. Mike Hilton leading a swarm of Bengals. Time for a game break. And hey, hello, Chris uh, Thompson. How are you? I mean, couldn't be better talking to you, partner. 49ers Lions scoreless in Detroit. Jimmy G started, but it's Trey Lance. The third overall pick getting his first career touchdown pass is a five-yarder to Trent Sherfield. Niners up 7-0. Chris? All right, thanks, Carissa. Along with Kurt Menefee, updating us on all the other games going on. Boy, a lot of quarterback stories this year. Return of quarterbacks, quarterback battles, rookies on the spot, and a veteran. Kurt Cousins facing third and 20 with noise in the jungle. and Ogan Joby combined on the sack. 
Playing a lot of man defense. Nobody beats their guy in coverage. Just watch these guys inside just pushing the pocket. That's really what happens. It, it's not anybody coming off the edge. It's not anybody doing anything outstanding. They just continue to push and work and push. They push that pocket right back into the lap of Kirk Cousins. I know Cousins thought he was going to see man-to-man -man coverage, at least anticipated much of that. Not sure if it's confusing him or if the rush is that good against the Viking offensive line. Barry gets it out of there. Phillips, fair catch at midfield. So the field position game the Bengals are playing has them set up nicely in a scoreless game. Let's look at the Viking defense under Mike Zimmer from 2014 to 2019. They allowed just over 19 points a game, second fewest in the league in that span. And last season, they allowed almost 30, fourth most in the league, most ever by a Zimmer coach defense. And then they overhaul things, get the Neil Hunter and Michael Pierce back. They missed all of last season. Anthony Barr inactive for this game, but we'll watch that knee injury. And then they added Dalvin Tomlinson, Sheldon Richardson, Everson Griffin comes back to the Vikings, and Bashad Breeland and Patrick Peterson, veteran corners after the youth moves at corner did not work. And it's a defensive struggle so far. Yeah, so I mean, we've talked about what the Cincinnati Bengals did, but but Minnesota did the exact same thing. Mike Zimmer, and, and I had a game with the Vikings last year, and you could sense the concern that Coach Zimmer had at that point because he, the injury bug had already kind of hit him. He knew he didn't have the depth behind it, and, and now you're kind of out of your comfort zone. You're trying to manufacture pressure. You're, you're going into games with, with matchups that you don't feel confident in. Uh, for him to have all those guys back and then to get some bigger bodies on that second tier, they, they did a really nice job of establishing some really quality depth in their defensive line. Nixon in the backfield after a four-yard pickup. He gets the football again, trying to turn the corner, and... Knocked down just across the 45 of Minnesota by Kendricks, who's been busy. And I'm sure Bengal fans are saying, wait, well, we, we draft Jamar Chase. We got T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd. Uh, we want our quarterback to unleash one here. Yeah, but but don't forget, you got Joe Mixon back there. I mean, he, he is an underrated player. He's one of those guys in the NFL you don't hear a whole lot about. Uh, with Giovanni Bernard not with Cincinnati anymore, look for Joe Mixon to become more of that three-down complete running back. Does a real nice job in pass protection. A good receiver out of the out of the backfield. Just saw a shot of Chase, rookie receiver from LSU, fifth overall pick. On a third down, the throw is on target, but knocked out of the hands of T. Higgins. Xavier Woods made the play. Higgins is 6-4. And the throw was right there, but a good hit by Woods. Yeah, and that, everybody we talked to liked Xavier Woods for the Minnesota Vikings. Great pickup from the Dallas Cowboys. Scoreless so far between the Bengals and the Vikings as we are kicking off 2021 in Cincinnati. Offensive coordinator Clint Kubiak calling plays for the first time in an NFL game. Yes, the son of Gary Kubiak. Vikings had started at their own 25, their own 20, their own 10, and now their own nine-yard line. Yeah, they're going back further and further towards their own end line, but when we played with Norv Turner, this is one of the areas where Norv would love to take a shot, and usually the first play to start a series. I'd love to see Clint Kubiak get a little more aggressive. And here he goes down the sideline, and the throw off the hands of Jefferson. Covered by Awuzie. And when you say we, you're talking about the Cowboys. I'm, I'm impartial here, but I know you won three Super Bowls. There, you weren't with us? They, no, I, I was watching. I was rooting for you. But this was the aggressive play you wanted. Yeah, and there's that matchup that, that we talked about. We thought we could see this a little bit more with Ch uh, Chidobe Awuzie trailing Justin Jefferson. You can see there's a lot of contact Ooh, there before that yeah. ball gets in. Now, for me, what I like to do, okay, that's how they're going to call it. This is how this crew's going to call it. They're going to let us play on the outside. We'll see if they maintain that consistency in their play calling uh, with the penalties all game long. Dalvin Cook carries and turns the corner. Cook gets a first down, knocked out of bounds, his best run of the day. Jesse Bates knocked him out of bounds, but he took off when he got into the clear on the sideline. Yeah, you got to set the edges right, and that's these guys right here, they're responsible for it. Both of them get tucked inside. Rashad Hill does a good job getting all the way out to Von Bell, the safety, and getting him occupied. 
17 yard run without a huddle. Cousins on the move. Pressure on. Completes to his tight end, Tyler Conklin. Pratt was there right away again. Conklin, Brandon Dillon, and Chris Herndon, who the Vikings acquired from the Jets when Irv Smith went out for this season, are the tight ends. Ben Ellison, who might be their best blocker, he is inactive today. Their best run blocker, I should say. And I know you mentioned how accurate Kirk Cousins has been throughout his career, but that, that's not a throw you want to continue to make during the course of the game. Rolling to your right and throwing back into the middle of the field. Alexander Madison, third year back from Boise State, comes in for Cook. Let's feel it in motion. Madison the carry, met hard, knocked down at the 30. Mike Hilton from his defensive back spot. Boy, that's a nice job. I mean, in, you talk about, like, guys that come off the edge and stuff like that. That's a, that's a whole different thing. Here he is right here. I mean, he's going to find his way. He's into the middle. He's going to find his way through all those big linemen. That's a great feel. I mean, you turn your guy loose. You're following somebody in motion across formation. You turn him loose to the other side and still have the ability to make that tackle. Four wide receivers for Cousins on third down. Cook is back in. He has a moment. He dumps it off to Cook. He gets a block and gets the first down. What an effort by Dalvin Cook. Well, I tell you, it was almost a heck of a play by Cam Sample, number 96. This is a great play call into this defense. They've got everybody coming, running routes away to the other side. Look at Dalvin Cook. He's like the only person out there in 96. Cam Sample kind of jumbles it up a little bit and forces him back inside. If he could have stayed out towards the sideline, that would have been a huge play. But a small sample size. Pickup of nine. Boom, boom. Pay attention. Cousins completes. Madison goes nowhere. Best looking drive for the Vikings in this game as they've worked it out up across the 40. And the good thing that they've done, even, even if they don't get another first down on this possession, they, they've kind of flipped the field now because Cincinnati had really controlled field position. And those last two three and outs up near midfield, uh, you know, re really, really uh, kind of just poor, poor effort, poor execution by that offense. You've got to take advantage of when you start a possession out near midfield to get at least a field goal. Deep drop by Jesse Bates in the secondary for Cincinnati. They run the ball to Cook, who is bouncing through Bengals and gets to midfield, and that should be enough for a Viking first down. That's what's changed, and of course that was the Bengal priority on defense. It starts with Dalvin Cook stopping him, and they did <laughs> until that 17-yard run, and now this on this drive. No, I, I agree with Jen Hale and, and her little report there at the top of the game. You know, Dalvin Cook looks different. I mean, he is he is decisive. I mean, he's he's a slashing runner. We've seen him out in the open field, but what you're seeing right now is a, a lot of strength and, and quickness through small gaps inside. He's only 5'10", dedicated this season to his father, James, who died unexpectedly late last December as Cousins is on target. Jefferson with a first down inside the 35 of the Bengals. And that's a great thing. Once you get that run game going, you can kind of run that play action boot off of it. It's Chido Bayouzie again working with Justin Jefferson. There's the separation right there off the release, and he's crossing the field. So Chido Bay's in a, in a trail position the entire time. Easy throw catch for Cousins and Jefferson. Pick up a 17 second catch for Jefferson. The rookie had 88 last year as a rookie, I should say, and this is second year and set an NFL record. Jefferson on the move is throwing the football and open. He stayed in bounds as KJ Osborne. I don't know. I think he might have sold that one a little bit, a little bit too long. Uh, I don't know what he waited for. He had he had KJ Osborne open. I mean, here's KJ right here. Kind of in the slot. Justin's going to come around on the reverse. I mean, he does a great job. Get it to him right there. <laughs> He's holding it, holding it, holding it. And a juggling grab by Osborne also in his second season. But a, what a throw. Creative by Clint Kubiak. Again, calling the play. Sliding underneath is Cook at the 25. Ogunjobi was there. Larry Ogunjobi. Interesting story because he's over 300 pounds and as a sophomore in high school he weighed well over what his mom thought was 
healthy and she took his gaming console away and he lost almost 100 pounds and then became a prospect for college and is now playing in the NFL. Yeah, why play the game on TV with a remote control when you can play the game on TV on your feet? Mom knows best. After a loss of three. Flag. It's like the Vikings again. This is how they started this game. There is no play before the snap. False start. Often. Number 17. Five yard penalty. Still second down. Their fifth penalty. Let's check back in with Carissa. Thanks, Meyer. Seahawks up 7 3 in Indy. Russell Wilson drops back and finds newly acquired tight end Gerald Everett for this nine yard score. Hawks leading this one 14 3. Chris Sterling, Jeff. All right, thank you, Everett, the former Ram. Seattle to build a, an 11 point advantage over the Colts at Indy. On a second and 18 now after the penalty and the loss of three. That's four false starts for the Vikings. Cousins has all kinds of time. Fires open. Balls out. Bengals are on it. There is a flag down at the 31 yard line. They're going to say that's an incomplete pass from the start. We'll check that penalty. Yeah. Did he have an, did he have possession long enough? There, there's a couple of Bengal players out there signaling first down their direction. Did he secure the ball and have a catch? Holding offense. Number 56. Ten yard penalty. Replay. Second down. Second holding call. Let's check the hold. I think it's going to be, I thought it was, uh, yeah, there it is. There's a takedown on DJ Reader with Garrett Bradbury. Little WWE out there. Amir Abdullah, who was activated off the practice squad with Sean Mannion, the backup quarterback for this game, has come in on second and 28. He gets the pitch. And near the 35 yard line. Boy, six penalties have really affected the flow of offense for the Vikings. And looks like we have a player slow getting up for Minnesota. Yeah, and I tell you, that is one area for both of these teams. We talked about how important it is for these offensive lines to be able to function well. More important than that is going to be staying healthy. Rashad Hill is in for Christian Derisaw, who's continued to have trouble with that core injury. Uh, had a surgery during camp. He's inactive today. He was their first round pick. There's not a whole lot of depth in either one of these offensive lines. And the kicking game, Greg Joseph, the Viking kicker, didn't kick it all last year. 50 yard field goal is his range. They're right on the cusp of that. And that throw to Osborne. He slips a tackle. And near a first down. He got it if they don't call him out of bounds after the initial contact. Wow, Coach Anarumo is going to be furious with his defense on this one. This is third and 24 coming out of that slot. It's a nice jumbled up right there. Eli Apple misses the tackle right there. It's going to make it short of the sticks and force a field goal opportunity. Meanwhile, Osborne, who played in nine games, a special teamer, didn't have a catch last year as a rookie, picks up 25 on his second catch, the biggest play of the game so far from the 11-yard line. Cook into a crowd. That's so hard. You've played so well, you know, to start this game here, and, and, and you've had field position. All of a sudden, Minnesota puts together a drive, but on a third and 24, an opportunity to force a field goal try and you allow a conversion. Yeah, meanwhile, Osborne might be that third receiver the Vikings are looking for. He and Dede Westbrook in a battle for that. Amir Smith-Marset, the rookie, maybe down the road, but after Thielen and Jefferson with Irv Smith out, there was a lot of talk about how that other spot might be filled. Hey, look at Ash, look at Ash. On second and nine, we have a timeout. Looks like the Bengals have used timeout. a timeout. Cincinnati, they're second. Now this from Lowe's. There's a new team in the NFL. One that plays for home, everyone's home. Whether you're a rookie or a seasoned pro, this team has your back. We can help you tackle any project. 
We're the Lowe's home team, and anyone can be on it. Are you in? Try out for the Lowe's home team today. Bengals will have one timeout remaining. Vikings have all three. Cousins, 11 of 14, over 100 yards. And Justin Jefferson has a completion in this game. Meanwhile, Dalvin Cook, eight carries for just under 30 yards. Jesse Bates, part of that strong safety combo for Cincinnati with Von Bell. On second and nine. Jefferson top of your screen. Cousins looks that way and goes down across the 20 yard line. Awkward looking play. Josh Tupo got to him. Josh Tupo, a notable of those guys, he opted out last season too. Here's your coverage down the field. Nice job by Cincinnati. They got everything short up there. Nowhere to go with the ball. That's why Kirk Cousins has to hold on to this. And again, nothing fancy, just continuing to push that pocket. And again, there's that off-schedule ability of Kirk Cousins you talked about. Also off-schedule, a flag. Adrian Hill saying there was defensive holding, which is big because it'll give the Vikings an automatic first down at the five-yard line and first and goal. We didn't hear the number from Hill announcing that, but it, we'll search for that to see if we can show it to you because it's a, a major tipping point here where the Bengal defense looked like they had... Backed up Cousins. Meanwhile, Cousins throws. Touchdown, Vikings! Adam Thielen. Boy, when, when they get in the red zone, he's the go-to guy. Last year, 14 touchdowns. And he starts off in game one with the first of the season for the Vikings. Just one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, man-to-man -man coverage, push-up. You get the separation, run into Eli Apple. He's got to give a little bit of space, maintain his balance. And some people are going to say, isn't that pass interference? Absolutely not. He has the right to that piece of ground just as much as Eli Apple does. He's got to play that contact much better. Cousins and Thielen ate up Eli Apple and Von Bell when they were Saints back in the playoff win that Cousins led Minnesota to on the road a few years ago. The extra point is good. And after a strange defensive holding call, looked like the Bengals were still accepting or understanding when Cousins quickly flipped it into the end zone and it's seven to nothing Vikings. Cousins to Thielen, his 40th career touchdown grab. Craig Joseph kicking off. Touchback out to the 25. So let's look at that, that penalty on Eli Apple, that defensive hold. Yeah, we were kind of focused on the sack on Kirk, Kirk Cousins, but here's Eli Apple. And remember, if you grab any jersey, it's a holding penalty. So watch Justin Jefferson as he comes out of the break to go back to the outside right here. He goes to get separation, get a handful of jersey. Here comes the flag right there. Now that would have become a third and 19 had there been no penalty. And then Eli Apple again on that one there. So that was a really tough series for him, the third and 24 conversion, the holding that extends the series, and then the touchdown. Well, he's playing because Trey Waynes, the former Viking, is out with a hamstring. He didn't play last year at all for Cincinnati. And Apple in trouble at getting away. Burrow to Mixon, who gets a first down up across the 35-yard line. Showing some movement there. That's what Joe Burrow wanted to do, wanted to find out for himself in a full game, moving around in the pocket. Yeah, well, one of the things you have to do is you can't let Everson Griffin come unblocked. That, that's one of the guys you want to at least put one of your offensive linemen on. But nice athleticism by Joe Burrow right there. Just spin out of it and find Joe Mixon. Now, we said the same thing about Minnesota. They were backed up. Hey, you need to get a little bit more aggressive. You've been here the whole start of the game. You know, you got to get out of here. So you're going to have to get a big play. Same thing for, for Cincinnati here. I'd like to see them a little bit more aggressive with their play calling. Samaj P. Ryan in the game and shoved backwards. Burrow so far four out of six, really nothing deep. No, when they had field position, the Bengals very good field position. They didn't really attempt to go downfield. There was one pass off the hands of T. Higgins on a big hit. But Zach Taylor kind of finding his way with his quarterback playing again at his first game since last November. Piran stays in it running back after a two-yard pickup. Higgins in motion. 
fastest player in this offense, according to the Bengals. P. Ryan gets knocked out right away. The shot Breeland from his corner spot was with Kansas City last year. Makes the play. And he's going to come right here, and it's, it's going to be Tyler Boyd's responsibility, number 83. He doesn't have his eyes on 21, and all of a sudden he gets out leveraged. Where's your most dangerous man? Who's the guy that can blow up that play? Without a huddle. Another third down test for this offense. Burrow has time and open. Catch made. First down, Jamar Chase. The first Bengal ever to wear number one in an NFL game. And that's why he was taken number five overall by the Cincinnati Bengals, his ability to stretch the field and make big plays. That's one of the things that's been lacking from this offense for the last couple of years. They want to be more explosive, and, and that was really the big debate going into the draft. Do we go with Jamar Chase and become more explosive, or Penny Sewell sitting there as a kind of a foundational left tackle? Do we go with Penny Sewell to protect Joe Burrow? Burrow under pressure now, and can't get away. Harrison Smith, the veteran safety, was in there first. Yeah, but that's I'm going to put that one on Samaj P. Ryan. He, he's he's a guy who's also good. We talked about Joe Mixon. He's also good in protection, right? You can't just be a runner and a receiver. You got to be good in pass pro, and and he's got to do a better job here against Harrison Smith coming off the edge. And that's where Giovanni Bernard, who the Buccaneers signed to their team, was one of the better blocking backs in all of football last last year. Not just a third down receiving back. P. Ryan stays in after a loss of 10. Straight ahead handoff. And all the way down to the 42. Of Minnesota power run from Samaj P. Ryan. Yeah, nice job by CJ Uzama coming cross formation. You'll see 87 flash right there. There he goes. He's the one that gets the cutoff on the backside. Allows Samaj P. Ryan to get through that good that, that hole in between. Picked up 13, wondering if Joe Mixon is getting a rest or if he might be banged up a little bit. Check on him on the sideline. Jen Hale will at least have a report at the half, if not sooner. Remember, Mixon only played six games of foot injury last year. Catch made by Chase. He has a first down inside the 30. Well, so much for the uh, the issue with catching the football. Yeah, everybody was talking about him coming out of preseason. It dropped the, the last four passes. There's Samaj P. Ryan with a nice pick up there. Giving some time again on the back shoulder. Good clean catch. Continues on the move. Chase, Burrow, Taylor. None of them were worried about Jamar being able to catch the football. Even had a jugs machine brought to his home. Three play Burrow. Flag down. Going for Higgins. And there's another flag. We may have interference on Breland. Good job by Joe Burrow recognizing he's got a free play, so take that shot down the field. Everybody always says three things can happen and two of them benefit the offense. So they'll decline the offside. So they take the pass interference, and it's a penalty of 27 yards. And that will bring us to the two-minute mark of the first half after a defensive struggle. Looks like the offense is here finally starting to click. Back out there for the Bengals. They were taping his left foot that last series that he missed, series or two. Of course, the foot injury last year was his right foot. First and goal from the three. Mixon. Run out of bounds. Harrison Smith. Most tenured Viking. Ten seasons. Got a contract extension that should have him finish his career as a Viking. Told us he takes 
pride in being here and maybe ending his career here. The staple of that defense with all the other changes they went through last year. He was there for this team and has made a couple of big plays already. And this is one of those areas when you break the game down, Chris, that the Bengals really struggled with last year. Last in the NFL and TD possession when they're first and goal inside the five-yard line. Quick snap. Burrow with a look. End zone throw. Touchdown. Well, there's a much better start to 2021 inside the, the five-yard line first and goal. They took that stat you just mentioned it, threw it out the window. Oh, yeah. Let me show you. <laughs> Joe Burrow to T. Higgins. Higgins had six TDs last year, 67 catches, and hauls in the first touchdown of the Bengals season. Yeah, just gonna he's going to work through some of the pressure right there and just kind of stay alive. Don't know. What happens once they get over here, because you could see really quickly at the last second, one of the defenders coming off to try and cover him, Xavier Woods dropping back. Was he supposed to be in the back part of the end zone? Extra point. McPherson is good. You're tied at seven. Joe Burrow looking a little bit more comfortable. Responding to the Viking touchdown. It's 7 7 here in Cincinnati. On Toss, and that last drive covering 75 yards to tie the game. Cousins hoping to get in there and do something with all three timeouts for the Vikings a minute 47 before the half. Let's go back and revisit that last drive by the Vikings. They've been pinned back all afternoon long. Here's the first big third down. They converted right here to Dalvin Cook. But then another one on a third and 24. A missed tackle right there by Eli Apple allows K.J. Osborne to get the first down. And then again, a little holding penalty right there. There was a sack by Cincinnati there that would have first forced a third and 19. But they get the holding penalty next snap. It's Adam Thielen for the touchdown. Bengal defense, for the most part, has done a good job on Dalvin Cook, who had nearly 2,000 scrimmage yards last year. Cousins through the hands of Cook at a high throw. Yeah, you bring him in here to rush the passer, but a little athleticism right there. Trey Hendrickson covering Dalvin Cook out in the flat. So you're going to bring pressure away, so you've got to drop somebody, right? So we're going to drop our big pass rushing defensive end. And he's going to do a pretty darn good job of covering a, a very shifty running back. Dalvin Cook is the leading receiver in this game with three catches. Cousins catch made. There's a flag down back in the backfield. That's Conklin, the tight end. Yeah, holding on Rashad Hill. I mean, Trey Hendrickson is ramping up right now, boy. What a heck of an inside move on that last play. Holding. As one of the things that Brian O'Neill told us about Rashad Hill getting this start, he's proven it out here in our in our league that he's a good player. But that's just a great inside move. Oversets a little bit, allows that inside pathway. You can see right there, he's far too wide outside on his set. Trey Henderson sees it, comes right inside. Lamir Abdullah comes in. That's eight penalties, as you see. Now, part of those penalties, because the Bengals' defense and the crowd have been so good. Cousins has time, dumps it off to Abdullah. And it'll be third and forever. Need to get all the way up to the 35 for a first down. Vikings got to be careful here, because they're scheduled to kick off to Cincinnati to start the second half. Remember, the Bengals deferred to start the game, so... And that might have been something right there for Amir Abdullah. Don't fight to get out of bounds. I know it's contrary to your thinking in a two-minute situation, but you're going to be ending up in a third and long. You know, stay in bounds. You know, Cincinnati's only got their one timeout left. Force them to use it there so they don't have any left on their drive. Need 15 for a first down. Conklin, the tight end, will not get it. Von Bell brought him down. Another Ohio State Buckeye on this Bengal team. We're going to have a timeout by Cincinnati. They used their last to preserve the clock, and they're probably going to have good field position and enough time to timeout. do something on the scoreboard. Yeah, Von Bell, we've talked a lot about the different players that 
Cincinnati has brought in on that defensive side of the ball. They brought Von Bell in two years ago, and, and what he's doing right now is he's kind of felt his way through that first year. He's, he's earned everybody's respect, and he's becoming a vocal leader. He's kind of the guy that's really challenging his teammates about building the culture on that defensive side of the ball. Enjoy watching Von Bell play since he's come into the league. He's, he's always been a good player, plays very physical. Jordan Berry, who's from Australia near Melbourne, played his college ball at Eastern Kentucky. Booms it away, and Darius Phillips hauls it in inside the 15 to Cincinnati. Hit hard. Hangs on to the football, and eventually other Vikings bring him down. A swarm of Vikings took out a tough hit and held on to the football. Africa and my Allstate. Save money like a champion with Allstate. Championship savings for the win. Something Zach Taylor, the third-year coach, talked about, about change here. Called it the best, most talented team he's had since he's been here. The guys are smarter and playing faster, and... In a tie game now. By the way, the Bengals' first time in 17 years they had a kind of a new twist to their uniform. It's subtle. It helped to create a, a transition. Burrow, Higgins, first down for the Bengals. Just short of the Cincinnati 40. Remember, they don't have a timeout. Getting everybody to the line. Jamar Chase, top of your screen. He's been big on third down. Second down underneath to Mixon. He's trying to get out of bounds and eventually is wrestled out of bounds. Time for a game break. Here's Carissa. Thanks, Myers. You're going to love this one. Shane Waldron's letting Russ cook. Russell Wilson up top. Wait for it. you got to wait a while because it's a 69-yard touchdown pass. Russell Wilson's third of the first half. CFC lead this one, 21-10. Right, thanks, Thompson. That's that moon ball, that kind of rainbow throw from uh, Russell Wilson. 49ers are also winning big. Rams will play the Bears Sunday night in the NFC West. Arizona up big on Tennessee. Burrow. Sideline. Tyler Boyd hangs on. Nice connection from Burrow to Boyd. midfield first down Bengals and out of bounds will they go for the end zone they got a rookie kicker who's got some leg strength that's a heck of a throw by Joe Burrow right there 10 out of 12 talk about a high completion percentage going deep Jamar Chase he's got it Chase to the Deserves a wow. He just runs right past Bashad Breeland. Nothing fancy, just a go route. He gets on top of him and another great throw by Joe Burrow. It's kind of interesting. We talked to Zach Taylor about that decision on draft day between Panay Sewell to be your, your foundational left tackle, to be a right tackle, or Jamar Chase. And he said, you know what, they're both the right answers. And we didn't do this because of the relationship between Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase. We just felt adding another receiver to be explosive. And, and when you talk about this offense last season, 31st in the NFL with 20 plus plays, 32nd when you talk about pass plays, they needed to get more explosive. And he talked to Brian Callahan, from the Broncos, uh, and, and he said, Freeland, who's injured, sorry. Yeah, and he, and he said, you know, hey, we, we did this in Denver, and, you know, I'm telling you, you get strong on the outside at the wide receiver spot, it's going to help us out more than the O-line. A 50-yard touchdown toss. Hope Freeland is okay. We'll continue to move on his own power to the Vikings sideline, and Joe Burrow with his head coach, Jamar Chase. You know, when they were at LSU, Chase had 20 touchdown tosses from Burrow back in 2019. Extra point is good by McPherson, and 
some of the celebrating. You know, that LSU combination with Justin Jefferson and Burrow and Chase, all big playmakers. Yeah, but one of the questions we've had, right, you're, you're playing a little bit of man coverage right here in a two-minute situation, and, and there he goes. I, I don't know if Bashad Breeland thought he had a little bit of safety help, but who, boy, he was he played a, a, a really soft coverage. And there's the, the gritty, you know, they were teammates, and there's some debate about who did it first. And it was Jamar Chase. Justin Jefferson did it first in the NFL, obviously, as a Viking. And there is Burrow, who had talked about, and his teammates said, this offseason, not only recovering from a knee, but the velocity on his throws and his deep ball, the arm strength, which was never really in doubt, had improved. And we saw a quick example of that here, of the, right there to give the Bengals the lead. Yeah, I mean, very, very good with his short and medium range passes last season. And, and that's what good players do. You, you, you take all that data as you go into your offseason and say, OK, where can I get better? And one of the things that, that Joe Burrow saw during the course of rehabbing from an ACL, MCL tear and everything else he was doing in the offseason, he noticed that his his quarterback rating on the deep throws was not where he wanted it to be. McPherson. Touchback. Vikings have all three of their timeouts, but only 35 seconds. Let's check in with Kurt Menefee. Football's back, which means our hearts are full. The stadiums are full, and we have a full slate of games from across the league to break down. And we have a full desk. Or at least we will. That's coming up on the Verizon Halftime. I right, thanks, Kurt. Look forward to opening Sunday around the NFL. This is just exactly what, what you were talking about. And again, remember it was in November, that 10th game where he had the injury. But he, he looks comfortable. Cousins. Flag and whistle before the sack. Boy, Minnesota is really struggling with some fundamental things, just some mechanics, you know, getting in and out of the huddle, getting to the line of scrimmage. Number 75, five-yard penalty, still first down. All right, that's the fifth false start. Now, I apologize if the microphone's not working for our referee, Adrian Hill. Obviously, the Viking snaps are not working either. They, Brian, Brian O'Neill, the right tackle, talked to us about you know, preparing with a silent count, but did say it was something they hadn't used as the breeze kicks up here in the booth and on the field in the face of Kirk Cousins. But five is inexcusable. Cousins, plenty of time. On target. First down at the 40 to Thielen. 400th catch of his career. And a timeout Minnesota. They'll have two remaining. Coming from the outside, Adam Thielen is going to let that inside route settle down. You pull some coverage that way, and then you settle in right behind it into that little soft spot. Horizon halftime will update you on the Eagles in Atlanta. Carson Wentz trailing to Seattle and Russell Wilson, a mixture of quarterbacks for the 49ers who are up 21 in Detroit. Carolina leading the Jets 9-0. 14-7 Bengals here. 30 seconds. Cousins on the move. Flag down. They have a holding call as Westbrook gets out of bounds. They have their hands full with Trey Hendrickson right now coming in off that left side, the offensive left side. So it's the 10th penalty over 90 yards. Number 69, 10-yard penalty. He looks very calm with that stat. And I'm sure they'll hear it at halftime. The one thing you can't do in, in week one is, is create more issues with things that are within your control. And, and for, this, for this team to come out and struggle with false starts, it, it's an excuse when you say, hey, we didn't, have, we didn't have people in the stands last year. Yeah, how many years you've been playing football? I mean, th don't use that as an excuse. You, you've got to get better at this. I mean, the holding penalties. It's, just, it's been a very, very sloppy first half for Minnesota. That's the second on Rashad Hill, the Viking left tackle, and the blitz is coming. Reads it. Thielen is smothered. Well played by the Bengals. Back at the 30. Ricardo Allen. And this is how hard it's been for, for Minnesota. I mean, you've got a perfect play call. You, you've got a blitz coming from the left side. You've got a screen right into it. I mean, watch the pressure's going to come from, from that side. 
you've got the right play call, but look at the hustle. And then they force everything back to the inside where Pursuit is. Very impressed with this Bengals defense here in the first half. Another guy brought in from the Falcons to help improve things, backing up Bates and Bell in that secondary. Burrow 11 out of 13 over 130 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Cousins has a touchdown to Thielen, but on a second and 20 with one timeout, flag down, maybe a free play. Let's see. It's incomplete. Or was this on Minnesota? Did the Vikings commit another? It wasn't a false start. Yeah, but now now he's got Trey Hendrickson in his head, right? He's they called for holding twice on inside moves, so that it, illegal formation means he's not on he's not up on the line of scrimmage. He's back off the line. He's cheating back to try and help himself against the pass rush. I'm sure the rush will be coming here. Leo, Leo. Bengals have three sacks in the game. There's time for Cousins he can, if he can air it out. Instead he goes short. And out of bounds and a flag down back at the 22 in the area of holding. Oh, I mean, uh, this, if I'm a, uh, Mike Zimmer, you know, he even admitted himself. Holding often. Number 56. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. So that's on Garrett Bradbury, the center. I mean, Zimmer said already that you're going to see a grumpy old man if this, yeah. the, the uncertainty of the offensive line isn't answered. Well, even Adrian Hill, you saw him there. Yeah. Sorry. Holding again. Yep. If you see it, you got to call it. That's what Adrian Hill has done so far. Well, we can, you know, Mike Zimmer is, 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 is fuming inside right now because of the things that his, his, his team has done that are within their control. And let's let's compliment Zach Taylor and his group on the other side. You saw that just one penalty for five yards. And look how long it's been since they've had that many penalties. 2005 in that neighborhood. Yeah, Zimmer's turning like beet red over there. It's sunny, but not that sunny. Phillips inside the 10. And as the clock hits zero. The return of Joe Burrow, return of fans, sold out stadiums, NFL Sunday week one. And they lead the visiting Vikings 14 to 7. Vikings will be kicking off to the Bengals to start the second half. Let's head to Los Angeles to the Visa half. Today's game flow brought to you by Progressive. Jill Burrow and the Bengals getting ready to receive the second half kick with a 14-7 advantage. So if you're on the Vikings sideline, I'm sure Zimmer let his team have it about some of the penalties. But I guess the question is, can that offensive line hold up to help them get back into the game? They're only down one score. Well, that's the big question. We talked about the skill players that this team has. They were fourth in the NFL last year in total offense. But if your offensive line can't hold up, it doesn't matter how good your running backs and your wide receivers are. And right now, Rashad Hill is struggling a little bit at that left tackle position. So their play calling, we talked about it being a little bit conservative. They may have to go back that way a little bit just to protect their guys up front. And Joe Burrow looks good. He looks fantastic. I tell you what, that, that last throw to Jamar Chase, I, I mean, that was spot on. Um, you know, we, you can question coverage, man coverage there, but hey, we pay guys to do their job. If we want to play man in that situation, play it. And it's a hell of a heck of a throw. Sorry about that. <laughs> Greg Joseph. 
Brandon Wilson watches it out to the 25. Let's go down to the field of Jen Hale. Jen? Jen, to, well, Chris, to echo what you and Daryl just said, what a fabulous comeback for Joe Burrow. Zach Taylor tells me Joe is everything we thought he would be and more. Now, Joe has been very conscious of keeping that knee warm. When the Bengals' defense is on the field, he's not sitting down. He's on the bike. He's up walking. He's throwing. He wants to keep movement in that. Taylor's challenge to him this half, no third and outs. Keep the play alive. He told Joe at halftime you have the authority to change the play and the ability to extend it so use it thank you Jen eight of eight in the second quarter was Burrow hands to Mixon who gets up across the 25 yard line eight for eight in the second quarter and those three and outs that that was one of the big issues there in the first quarter great field position three and outs didn't really take advantage of opportunities but there you see the stats the key stats from that first half and again that that bottom line the penalty yards you know Minnesota just not helping themselves out really well done by the Cincinnati Bengals the first game of the season one penalty for five yards in the first half Vikings have actually been flagged 14 times 10 of those penalties accepted the team record is 16 accepted penalties as Mixon carries and Mixon just short of a first down Again, that's a little bit of that defense there in those certain situations. When you get on those running downs, it's going to be a little bit of a changeup for the Vikings this year. A lot of those run games that are trying to get to the outside are going to come back towards the middle of the field the way they're going to defend that. Yeah, that 3-4, whatever the adjustment was. However, Mixon and the Bengals have handled it facing a third and short. Mixon said that he wanted to put this city on his back and carry this team and bring the Bengals back into their heyday. Chance of Houdé earlier in the sold-out stadium at Paul Brown. Throwing on third and short, but Mixon has the first down. It started out a little bit cautious for Joe Burrow, but once he had warmed up and they settled in against the Viking defense, then he was airing it out a little deeper. Yeah, they found something out. You know, you, you do that, you kind of poke, and you, you try to see what the defense is running and, and where are they vulnerable, and boy, they figured something out there at the at the end of the first quarter because that was a that was a really nice second quarter for the Cincinnati Bengals led by Joe Burrow. He was sacked twice, didn't run, but had to scramble away. Open at midfield, and moving up is T. Higgins. All the way inside the 35 of Minnesota. Higgins had the first touchdown grab from Burrow. Yeah, he really turns Bashaw Breeland around on this one. Watch the inside move, and then as he breaks to the outside, that's where he gets all his separation. He bites on that inside move, loses his balance a little bit. And we update the Breeland injury. Uh, he was well enough, obviously, to come back out, but now he heads over to the sideline. Remember, he was on the field on that. 50-yard touchdown toss, and he looks like he's in pain over there. We'll see who comes in. Chris Boyd or Mackenzie Alexander, depending upon who is. Looks like it's Boyd in his spot. Makes him the carry, and it's at the 30 of Minnesota. You know, Mixon topped 1,000 yards rushing in both 2018 and 19. First Bengal to lead the AFC in rush yards back in 2018. And again, that foot injury, the right foot last year, cost him in his fifth season, second rounder from Oklahoma. Ooh. And even though he missed all that time, he was still the top ground gainer last year for this Cincinnati team. Fake to Mixon, plenty of room. Burrow open, incomplete. He had Mike Thomas. But they didn't connect. Oh, he's gonna, he's not gonna be happy walking back to the huddle on that because this is really well done. Watch the, the play action in the backfield. Really good to get the defensive eyes in different directions. There's a little quick flip there. You're thinking boot, but they're going deep. And Mike Thomas is wide open. And that misfire, Burrow, he knows it. Ouch, he had hit 10 in a row, completed. Ten straight until then. Third and six, chance for the Viking defense. Burrow in the pocket. And what a catch! It looked like it was going to be intercepted. But Tyler Boyd ended up with it. <laughs> Mackenzie Alexander had it. 
I think it looked like it hit him right between the two and the four, too. You're trying to find that soft spot on the little curl route. Oh, boy. You know, things are going your way. They're just going your way. Right now, Cincinnati is on a roll. They're getting all the breaks. The former Bengal, Mackenzie Alexander, on fourth and one. They're going to go for it. Burrow keeps surging forward. And the Bengals look like they got it. Let's wait for the official signal. Yeah, to me, that's kind of a big deal, right? Yes, you know, Jen Hill talked about Zach Taylor saying Joe Burrow was everything we expected and more. Right there, quarterback sneak. You know, your quarterback coming back. You know, he's only nine months from an ACL, MCL. That, that shows you how confident they are in his, his physical ability right now. Yeah, he got the first up. Burrow, they told him, like, don't dive for a loose football or anything like that. He said, I, I don't know. My football instincts, I'm just going to react. I feel fine mentally and physically. And he looks that way. Uh, first down, Mixon. Weaving his way through the Vikings down to the 16-yard line. Well, Coach Zimmer is not going to be happy about the penalties so far this game, but now the running game is, is starting to be an issue, and, and he talked about the importance of winning the C-gap. So that's going to be the gap that's outside tackle tight end, and, and right now the Cincinnati Bengals are starting to exploit that a little bit. What about the A and the B-gap? They like to get out there in the sea. Whatever's working for you. Second and three. Burrow steps up, fires, catch. Inside the five, it's Higgins, and it'll be first and goal Cincinnati. You know what? It worked earlier in this drive. Let's go back and see if it works again. But Sean Breeland's not out there, but Chris Boyd is. So let's just run that same route. We'll give him a little inside move, then we'll break back to the outside. Chris Boyd plays it a little bit better, but stumbles again coming out of his break. Joe Mixon. To the end zone, touchdown Bengals. And even he's going to do the gritty. It took him a moment. They ruled touchdown. We'll have a closer look. Looked like he kept his feet moving the whole time. Never really. Did the ball break the plane when that rear end? It's kind of was dropping down. straight down. It wasn't really moving forward. Yeah, the official right there on the goal line watching closely. That's why they waited to call it a touchdown and be confirmed here in a moment or upheld, I guess. I think what you'll be able to get here is how does the ball drop? Does it come forward or does it just go straight down? And to me, it looks like it's just going straight down. So, like, he would have broken the plane prior he, to he, that. He did. It has been upheld, ruled a touchdown, and reviewed. It is a touchdown. And the Bengals open up a 13-point lead pending the McPherson extra point. It's good. They take the second half drive. Last three drives, each have been a 75-yard touchdown drive. Joe Mixon, after the two-yard touchdown run a moment ago, he talked about sitting on his back. He's feeling the fans. Wants to hear him. More chance of Hude here at Paul Brown Stadium. And a 14-point lead for the slight underdog Bengals at home over the Vikings, who... We put the ball in the hands. Coming out of the end zone, Smith Marset, the rookie, knocked down just across the 15. Jen? Guys, I thought Zim was hot when I talked to him at halftime. I'm glad I'm not standing next to him now. He was very frank with me. He's blaming a lot of this offensive problems in that first half on Kirk Cousins holding the ball too long. He said he's got to get rid of it sooner. They're going to change some of the protections up front to try to help him out. But to Daryl's point earlier, Zimmer is fine with Clint Kubiak's play calling. It's the effort and the concentration of his team that he has an issue with. Have you observed Cousins holding the ball too long? Not to question the head coach. If they're holding it, a guy, it 
Kirk stage of his career, he's holding it because nobody's open. And that's what you need. You just yes. need Dalvin Cook to just say, all right, if you're holding the ball, just give it to me and I'll hold it and I'll run for first downs all day. Yeah, because Cook is the difference. And again, that was the, the Bengal pinup board material was, or bulletin board was, we got to stop Cook first and force Cousins, who's got a lot of people to go to. Cousins said, you know, he didn't want to become a check down Charlie. You know, he, he, he described to us that I asked about changing plays. He said that each play has built in answers. But you got to have more answers than just Cook. Ogan Joby wrapped him up. I, I, listen, I, I, I played in a very different era of the NFL, but we went to the line of scrimmage with check with me's, which means based on what the defense was, we could go with one of two plays that was called in the huddle. We weren't a live audible team. I know the game has changed dramatically, and these quarterbacks have so much access at the line of scrimmage, but, but this offense is a little bit more old school, and, and I think that's fine because the, the play callers upstairs recognize the tendencies. They know field position down in distance, and if he does have the access to get to something from time to time, that's fine. Oh, almost broke that loose to the 38-yard line. Was Cook. Boy, it does this offense does run through number 33. You get back inside and, and gets inside of Eli Apple right there. And, and if he keeps his feet, th this is going to be a foot race down the sideline. Time of possession is equal, just over 17 minutes each. He only has 11 carries, but Cook is averaging four and a half a carry. Third and two. Cousins backpedaling, throws, receiver open, first down catch. Amir Abdullah came in as Cook went over to the sideline. So let's go. We got some cameras here. Let's go check out what the wide receivers are doing right here. So we're up at the top. We've got Stanley Morgan and Adam Thielen there. That's man coverage. Doesn't look like anybody's beaten man there. We come down to this side. There's Justin Jefferson inside. He's getting collision. Yeah, you, you just got to drop that off to your running back. So you saw Kirk Cousins holding it and pumping it, but he didn't have anywhere to go. And, and that's one of the things. They've got to they've be able to beat man coverage when they play against the Cincinnati defense. Well, that was a wise check down. It probably could have gone to it a touch earlier. It's Cook. Met hard. Von Bell got there first, and a flag down. Well, taunting is one of the, the big points of emphasis here, and we're going to get a taunting penalty on Von Bell right there? Well, we have to see it. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Offense, number 74. Oh, unnecessary it's roughness. Second down. Yeah, so it's not taunting. It's only Udo, the right guard, who was a tackle, has played tackle before, worked behind O'Neal. He gets called for it. He's over on the left side, I think, Darrell. There's 74 right in the top of your screen right there. He's now he's starting to move out to the play. Does he go after Vaughn Bell? Yep. Now, I don't know if you heard that at the end there, Chris, but that was a 15-yard penalty and the down counts. So it's second and 26, so that's incomplete. Chris Herndon, the new tight end from the Jets. And this looks like the Viking offense that started the game. Yeah, right, you just you get into a little bit of rhythm on this drive, a great response drive penalty. to Cincinnati's touchdown. Yes, your, your key nemesis this game, penalties. But again, the Bengals are forcing some of those penalties with their play, and the crowd, certainly, if the Vikings aren't handling it, and we're going to hear from them right now. Knocked out at the 40. K.J. Osborne hauled it in, and it's fourth down. Bates with the big-time hit. And one other thing, when we talked to Coach Anarumo about this defense, he really felt that he's got one of the best safety combinations in the NFL with Ron Bell and Jesse Bates. And, and we've seen some big physical hits from both of those players this afternoon. Yeah, I think the Vikings thought that they could win some of those one-on-one -on -one battles. You just illustrated a moment ago that Thielen and Jefferson weren't winning those. And after a drive... 
started out well for Minnesota. It stalls. Phillips busy inside the 20 of the Bengals. And thrown backwards. Good special teams play by the Vikings and Troy Dye. But the Cincinnati defense to go along with the crisp passing of Burrow as the Bengals with a 21-7 lead. NFL and Fox crew enjoying this game in Cincinnati. Jill Burrow set to throw, and he'll go down. Sacked at the 11-yard line. The moment after faking, Michael Pierce was in on him. Michael Pierce, their big free agent signing from 2020, who opted out last year. But here's the funny thing. They, they really feel that Michael Pierce has the ability, you know, as a pass rusher, you see how big his body is. You see that quick move right there on Trey Hopkins? I mean, that's impressive. That's what Andre Patterson, the defensive line coach and assistant defensive coordinator, sees from Mike Pierce. I mean, not just a big run stuffer, but that was a very impressive move as a pass rusher to get to the quarterback. Third sack for the Vikings. After a loss of eight, Nixon, who did most of the work on the ground and into the end zone the last time they had the football, carries there. Let's check in again with Carissa. Thanks, Chris. Titans trailing 24-6. to six. Looking to get back in this one, Ryan Tannehill links up with A.J. Brown for this 13-yard score. Titans now down 24-13. Chris? All right, thanks, Carissa. Keeping an eye on other scores. Seattle up on Indianapolis, 21-10. Buffalo leads the Steelers 10-3. Carolina 16-0, shutting out the Jets. And Houston leading Jacksonville 27-7. P. Ryan in the backfield. Pass is caught by Chase. Near a first down. Needed to get to the 31. He looks a little bit short. He's been Mr. Third down go to for Burrow. Yeah, they're coming after Bashad Breeland now. Little step late there. He's got some linebacker help, a little bit of zone coverage, but. I think we can put to Number rest. Number 75 is reporting eligible. Number 75 is reporting eligible. All right, so they're at their own 30. They need a yard for a first down, and they're lining up to go for it. Well, we talked about the wow. offensive linemen at the start of this game. They've got a lot of confidence in theirs, or is it the fact that Minnesota can't stay on sides offensively? A major tipping point in the game, and I don't think he got it. Stumbling was Mixon, and the Vikings on what was a risky call on fourth and a yard in your own territory this deep. Taylor showing confidence, but Zimmer's defense up to the challenge. Well, we, we've been hard on Bashad Breeland with his coverage as of late, but Bashad Breeland is the guy that, that makes the play here as he just kind of knifes through. There he is, 21. Watch him. He sees it, comes up. He's the one that gets the contact, gets Joe Mixon to stumble and come up short. Are you surprised at that call by Zach Taylor? I am. I am. Um, because we talked about the offensive line and, and we Minnesota getting back, you know, to their traditional style of defense and everything. And, and you, you've got a 14-point lean. Everything's going well. Punt and play field position. Don't give Minnesota an extra breath of life. Cousins from the pocket. Open, but a bad throw. Incomplete for Chris Herndon. Yeah, that was the way that Zach Taylor played the first half with the field position game until his quarterback was comfortable. And then, but with the lead and at home, maybe he just doesn't worry about the Viking offense scoring enough. Yeah, his defense is playing really, really well today. And, you know, sometimes it's great for, you know, a side of the ball to, to get that confidence from your head coach. Hey, you know what? We're at a 30 yard line. It's fourth and one. I, I have faith in you. Let's go get this. I trust our defense to hold him to a field goal attempt. Cousins now 19 out of 26. We have not had a turnover yet in this game by either team. In field goal range already as Cook slices inside the 25. It'll bring a third and about three. Could this be four down territory if you get enough on third? Let's say a couple of yards. What do you think that they'll call here? I don't know what Mike Zimmer is going to do, but, but it's, you're going to need to be within one. It needs to be a fourth and short to do it. Late addition on the field, Cam Sample running out for Cincinnati. There's an opportunity there to snap early. Protection picked up. Overthrown, Justin Jefferson. 
He had him. It's fourth down. It's kind of the first time they've got a clean look uh, at an open route. And a little bit high by Kirk Cousins right here. A little late with the hands getting up by Justin Jefferson. They're going to go for it here, Chris. So you're right. You're absolutely right. They're looking that this is four down territory. And, and I'm sure that Mike Zimmer is kind of looking at how many more possessions do I have by the end of this game with only 2.30 to go in the fourth quarter. He, he's going to have to get down here twice if he was to go for a field goal to try and win this game. And probably feels he doesn't have enough possessions left in the game. Pressure, blitz, open, first down, and maybe more. It's feeling for the touchdown. On a fourth and four, Cousins connects to Thielen for a Viking score of 24 yards. So there's your tipping point in the game. The Bengals go on fourth and short, deep in their own territory. Don't get it. Vikings on fourth and four. Get it and get a touchdown. And get the, and get the matchup you want, right? You get, you get Adam Thielen against... Number 21, Mike Hilton. And, and remember, Mike is more of that kind of slot guy, blitzer type guy. We've seen him make a lot of great plays with, with tackles and stuff. And you've got Adam Thielen matched up against him one-on-one -on -one in coverage. Adam Thielen just keeps doing it. The undrafted free agent from Minnesota State. He's made a career for the Vikings out of finding the end zone. It's a nice truck. Yeah, Chevy Silver. The old rivals in over a decade, followed by USC battling Washington State. That's Saturday on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Zach Taylor, his hometown is Norman, Oklahoma, but he was a two-year starter for the Cornhuskers, playing quarterback at Nebraska. Had an 18-11 and 11 record and 45 touchdown passes in college. I know Joe Burrow said, hey, I, as a head coach, he relates well to the quarterback position from his days playing that. Meanwhile, Thielen, in the end zone for the second time, and things have tightened up in Cincinnati. Out to the 25-yard line. Talk about the gamble that you questioned, and the Viking defense was up to it. Yeah, I mean, it's third and short, but you're at your 30-yard line. You've got a lot of momentum. Uh, it's, a, it's a risky, gutsy call. It backfired on Cincinnati, but you force the fourth down, and then Minnesota is able to get a nice matchup with Adam Thielen against Mike Hilton there in the slot. Adam Thielen runs a great route, middle of the field, wide open because they're playing man. And over on the Bengals sideline, we saw defensive coaches huddled around the players' special meeting after that call. Back to Mixon on the ground, slips a tackle and gets up across the 30-yard line. 13th carry in this game for Mixon, who has a touchdown run. Dalvin Cook has 13 carries for Minnesota, averaging just over four yards a carry. And that's the thing. They, they can lean on Joe Mixon a little bit here. It, it's going to pose a lot of challenges for defenses when they play against Cincinnati's offense as, as these receivers start to grow with Joe Burrow together. And then you've got Joe Mixon in the backfield. T. Higgins is out of the game right now. Jen Hale checking on that on the Bengals sideline. It's Mixon again. And he will get the first down. Slicing up to the 40-yard line. Here's that kind of that defense that they're utilizing right now in the first and second downs. And you can see it's got a little bit of that flair to the 3-4 defense. we got your three guys there. Now there's that C-gap. You're forcing it back inside. And, and Mike Zimmer felt that just some of these elements from the college offenses that are coming up to the NFL, the jet sweeps, the RPOs, and this wide zone run scheme, you know, those three techniques in his traditional four-down linemen weren't able to get there. But Minnesota or Cincinnati is doing a nice job of stretching it but then getting back inside. Yeah, they're using two tight ends now after that 10-yard gain for Mixon, and he'll get more. Knocked out of bounds when he got near the 40 of Minnesota. And Xavier Woods knocked him out. And Xavier Suofilo, the right guard, does a heck of a job getting out and around. You see him right there. It's, it's such a well-blocked play. Look at how far downfield Big 72 is before he has to hit somebody. Makes it chugging along over 70 yards rushing now in the game, averaging almost five a carry. Usually. Xavier Suofilo, one of those guys in that battle, that was one of the positions that, that Cincinnati wanted to look at. They had some young guys battling it out for that guard spot, but it was the two vets that prevailed. 
Tough hit on P. Ryan as he is shoved backwards. I haven't mentioned Daniil Hunter's name a whole lot today. As the third quarter is winding down. After no gain from the 40 of Minnesota, Samaje Piran remains the back. And that will wind up three quarters of football here in Cincinnati. Burrow and the Bengals still leading, but things have tightened a bit. It's 21-14, and Cincinnati has the football. Hearing 90 degrees and humid here in Cincinnati with Daryl Johnston, Chris Myers, Jen Hale is down on the field, and it's a good one. Bengals took a 21-7 advantage here in the third quarter. Now in the fourth quarter, Vikings close the gap just before we start here. And Cincinnati on the move with Joe Mixon in the backfield on a second down nine and at the 40 of the Vikings. Mike Thomas in motion. Mixon the carry. And gets near the 46. Let's check in with Jen on an update on T. Higgins. Jen? Chris, you were talking about the heat earlier. It is a real factor here. The Bengals had to cart Higgins off the field. He was feeling so woozy from dehydration. They're giving him an IV in the locker room, and they expect him to be back. But this heat is affecting both teams. The Vikings are using sunscreens over on their sideline to shade their players. Harrison Smith was hosing off with wet towels when I left their sideline a few moments ago. So the heat, the weather, is certainly something to contend with in this fourth quarter. All right, thanks, Jen. Higgins, four catches at a touchdown. Jamar Chase, four catches at a touchdown. Touchdown, bottom of your screen, and incomplete. Looked like a mix-up. That's Mike Thomas with two Vikings around him. And it's a fourth down. And I think you're trying to do like a little bit of a rub right here, like your inside receiver is going to push up and then kind of move back in and make that guy run a bubble. And Mackenzie Alexander does a nice job of getting underneath it. Field goal try, the fifth rounder from Florida, Evan McPherson, who... Hit a 57-yarder in the preseason against Miami. In high school, he made from 60. This will be 53 yards. It's up there. It's out there. It's through there. And a 10-point Bengal lead. The rookie from Florida gets it done in Ohio. And after the drive stalls, Bengals lead 24-14. T. Higgins looking on, likely if they need him here in the fourth to come back out to play after Jen Hale reported on the heat and the dehydration. Meanwhile, McPherson, one of the few kickers who Decided to forego a year of eligibility and come out early. That's why he was drafted. SEC's all-time leader. 85% field goal percentage with Florida. And he's been clutch from 53 for Cincinnati. Coming up next, America's Game of the Week. Aaron Rodgers and the Packers up against Alvin Kamara and the Saints. They play that in Jacksonville after Hurricane Ida moved the Saints around. Some will see the Broncos and the Giants. That's coming up next. America's Game of the Week on Fox and on the Fox Sports app. They were down 14 a moment ago. Down 10 now. That's Thielen. Spins across the 30. Eli Apple on the tackle. We check in with Carissa. Thanks, Chris. Eagles up 15 to 6 in Atlanta. Jalen Hurts. Hands it off to Kenneth Gainwell, the rookie who takes it in from eight yards out for hers. His first career touchdown. Eagles now lead 22 to 6. Chris? Okay, thanks so much. NFC East, the Eagles getting out on top of things a little early. Dallas, a tough loss in that great game on Thursday night in Tampa Bay when the Bucks and Brady got the year going. Cousins looks one way. And gets rid of, he got smothered back at the 20 and just had to get rid of the football. That's Larry Ogunjobi. Ruled incomplete on the field. I don't know where he was going with that. Looks like there was some type of screen set up. But here's on the outside. Here's Chidobe Awuzie 
working against Justin Jefferson, and they've been working against each other majority of the day. He looks over there, and now it looks like he's got an opportunity. I don't know. I can't tell if that was like an outlet to a screen or Kirk Cousins is just getting the ball away so he doesn't take the sack. Third and five. Cousins tipped away. Here comes a flag. Thielen may have been held. Akeem Davis Gaither almost had the interception for the Bengals. And the Bengals are saying that ball was tipped. So can you call interference? I don't know if the flag went down before the ball was deflected. Oh, we got one in the backfield. I think we got a hold on the offense. And another one at the 38. Uh, again, that was the third down play. All right. There is no foul for defensive pass to the field. The legal use of the hands, hand to the face, defense, number 91. That five-yard penalty will be enforced in the previous spot. Automatic first down. Well, it's a Viking win finally on a penalty call. Trey Hendrickson a little overzealous. Yeah, coming off the edge. Working against Rashad Hill right there. You see that hand get up. Well, you know, he got it off quickly, so it's not like he held it there. I always thought that, well, <laughs> that one, it looks like it stayed there for a little bit longer. <laughs> second, that's only the second penalty accepted against Cincinnati. But a fresh set of downs from the 35, and the pitch to Cook. Blocker's in front, but Bengals are there. Tough hit as he was going out of bounds around the 40. Von Bell delivered it. Nice job by Brian O'Neill getting out front of that big tackle pulling working in space on a, on a smaller defender and, and that new rule where you can't cut you can't go low outside that tight end box it's gonna make it hard for those pulling linemen downfield six new rules this year in the NFL two major points of emphasis taunting and helmet use Cousins pass caught that's C.J. Ham, the fullback, who works his way across midfield and has a first down. C.J. Ham, a former Pro Bowler in 2019, helping pave the way for Dalvin Cook and Alexander Madison. Again, Jefferson only has in this game, Justin Jefferson, three catches and hasn't done a lot of damage. It's been Thielen finding the end zone. On a first and ten. Cook. Maybe three. Cousins over 200 yards passing with two touchdowns. Cook over 60 yards rushing and a, has not been able to reach the end zone. A guy who scored 17 touchdowns last year. <laughs> Biggest run from Cook was a 17-yarder. Alexander Madison in. Cousins has time and open. Jefferson looked like the ball was a little late and Arouzier was there. Shadowing him rather successfully. I've seen a couple where Kurt's been on the back showed or a little bit on these throws. This is going to be another one here. He's got Justin Jefferson separating from Chido Bay, but it's a little late and it's a little behind by Kirk Cousins. He's got to wait on it a bit, and that gives Chido Bay the opportunity to make up the ground and make a play on the ball. They're first. This will be a 30-second timeout. The crowd once again influencing the game. And now this from DirecTV Stream.
DirecTV stream, I can get live TV and on demand together. Watch. Serena Williams, Wonder Woman. Serena, Wonder Woman. Serena, Wonder Woman. You cannot be serious! Get your TV together with the best of live and on demand. Introducing Direct TV Stream with no annual contract. Forced to use a valuable timeout in a game this close. Here in the fourth quarter, it's third and eight. Cousins gets rid of it. Cook, can he get the first down? Yes. Splits a couple of Bengal defenders and gets it. Another check down. But this one gets the first down. Yeah, you're exactly right, Chris. Watch how he sets up the defenders as they approach and then splits them. That's going to give you the greatest opportunity to break the tackle. As they converge right there, just find that soft spot, get in between both Von Bell and Chidabe Awuzi. 